Hi, my name is Danny Akotsky and I am a consultant in Mandian Strategic Program Services Group. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about rule creation in FireEye's threat analytics platform. We're going to cover the rule development process, some best practices, and top rule writing mistakes. Let's get started. First on the agenda is the FireEye rule development process. We're going to cover what exactly is a rule, different types of rules, fields involved in the rule, and simple versus regular expression-based rules. The most obvious question is, what is a rule? Simplest terms, a rule looks for a specific behavior in the event data, and that rule is going to trigger when that behavior is seen in the event stream. You can build a rule out of a single event or a sequence of events. We also call those multi-stage rules. Every event in the tap pipeline is analyzed by our rules service, and you can have thousands of rules in your tap instance. There are two different types of rules within TAP, FireEye rules and customer rules. FireEye rules are created by our detection team and they're automatically deployed to all customer instances. You'll be able to tell that we created them because the ID is going to start with a one. Customer rules are a little bit different. They are created by the customer and only for their specific instance, that ID is going to start with a 999. When creating a new rule, there are several fields available that both describe the rule and are going to modify how the rule functions. If you have several rules that all fall under the same umbrella, say for Microsoft Windows events, Linux events, you can group them under the same rule pack. You also have settings for confidence and severity, high, medium, and low for both. The distinguisher is going to be the field that the rule will trigger off of, whether that be source IPv4, desk IPv4, domain, or any field that you wish the rule to trigger off of. When you set a threshold for a rule, that's going to take X amount of events with the same distinguisher over X amount of time. For example, if you have one hit to a bad domain per hour, that might be an acceptable threshold. Happening more than that, you might want the rule to fire. Rules usually fall under one of two categories, simple or regular expression-based rules. Simple rules are exactly that. They're searching for a very simple type of event, and the variables aren't really going to change that much over time. In the first example on the screen, you can see a rule meant to detect a Windows RDP session from inside a LAN to outside the US. Those variables are probably going to stay the same. Now a regular expression-based rule will match a character pattern within an event stream. A good example of this would be a C2 domain. The domain name might not necessarily stay static, but will still follow a pattern that's able to be matched by a properly crafted regex. Now we'll get into some of the best practices when it comes to writing rules in TAP, including utilizing lists, utilizing the taxonomy, and specifying class and metaclass. Lists are a really cool benefit of TAP. When you have multiple items of a similar type that should be referenced across one rule or across multiple rules, and they're also very handy when you want to only maintain them in one location. On this slide, we see an example of when you might want to use a list. If you have a list of domains and you have them in a set, that can be a little bit top heavy, so you might want to consider using a list name for that. You may want to consider using lists when you have a series of items that are referenced across multiple rules. The list exceeds more than four to five items, and you want to perform searches against a series of items as well as write rules for those items. Another best practice is to utilize the taxonomy. Events are parsed based on a specified tap field taxonomy. So if you see an IP address in a raw message, that's going to map to desk IPv4 or source IPv4. If there's a domain somewhere in the raw message, there's a field for that as well. When possible, it's definitely more efficient to use a parsed field versus searching a raw unparsed message. When it comes to writing rules in TAP, specificity is king. The more specific a rule is, the better that it's going to perform. All rules should contain at least one class or meta class reference. A class is a name that's a reference to an event slash log source. Examples could be Apache HTTP server, bro, DNS, or checkpoint firewall. Meta class is a more generic term that's a reference to one or more classes that are similar. So HTTP server, DNS, or firewall. You can see some of those examples below. 
Now I'm going to cover some of the top mistakes people make while creating their rules in TAP. These include improper alias use, list utilization, distinguishers, class and metaclass, and group by errors. Here we have an example of how you have to reference an IP. It's not just IP and then the set of IPs. You have to designate dest IPv4 or source IPv4. Another common mistake, not utilizing those very handy lists. Here we see an example of a list of a bunch of MD5s and a bunch of bad domains. Very top-heavy, very unwieldy. You can instead use lists of MD5 or a list of domains. Following up on that, improperly referencing your lists can lead to some headaches. Here we have an example of how you should properly reference the aforementioned MD5 list. Another common mistake that will actually get better the more experience you get writing rules in TAP will be using distinguishers that don't actually exist. Some common ones are MD5SUM, Hostname, and SHA. Those aren't the correct distinguishers. Instead, you have to use MD5, Hostname, SHA1, SHA256, or SHA512. One of the more common mistakes is not specifying class or meta class in your rule. As I mentioned earlier, specificity is king. So instead of just leaving it to domain and URI, specify a meta class as well. Specifying group by is a mistake that we often see with people who are more experienced using the search query language rather than the rule query language. Group by source IPv4, as you see in this example, is something you would use when you're searching through the instance. When you write a rule, you're going to want to drop off that group by. I hope you've enjoyed this short presentation on rule creation in Mandiant's Threat Analytics platform. Thanks for listening.